Welcome to the morning session of 26 November 2021, Hunting for Susie at Hilo Nasty Large Hadron Collider. We have two talks in the session. First one by Dr. Tuhin Roy of TIFR on electroweak symmetry and generalized perspective. And second talk by Sejan Sekman from the Kyungpuk National University, Korea, yeah. on high luminosity large hadron collider perspective. So, ladies and gentlemen, now Dr. Tuhin Roy on his talk. Welcome, Tuhin. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. So, so uh, first of all, uh, let, uh, let me make a um, sort of where I'm coming from. from. So this is a Suzy talk I'm giving, and I and I have taught approximately for the last two and a half years at least. Okay, so this is basic basically snapshot what I was thinking in uh, three or so three and a half years back. Okay, and uh, so happy for that. But um, so that time when uh, at the time when I when I uh, was actively was was thinking of having. Uh, how to make sense of the electroweak world if, if there is symmetry or not and, and what it can mean and this is this was a result of that understanding right so uh, so um to start um, um i'll be quite brief i'll not talk about uh, uh you know you know the cool details of stuff but but i'll try to give you the essence of what i'm going to talk about okay uh, was in our mind our mind so first and foremost, most I'll start with this understanding of electroweak to weak scale. So as a standard model, this this basically fundamentally is a story of three scales. There's the story of the QCD scale, which which roughly gives the masses of the baryons. Then there is there is a story of weak scale, scale, which all from the you know, associated with Higgs space where that way modulated some parameter. Masses of the meson, mesons, mesons, it, it's a coupling between parameters and the QCD scale, right? And there's a third, there's a third scale that the, that the, uh, uh, the neutrino gets, which is we don't quite understand completely. Out of this QCD it is something that we're very comfortable with, and the electroweak we're not. And I'll try to why we're not that com comfortable with it. Okay. And there's a briefly I'll spend time about, about uh, why the super super symmetry moves and how the soft rock masses work out. Most of it stuff that you are familiar with, familiar with. Learned supersymmetry symmetry thinking of in the conventional school, right? Thinking it reading prime primer and stuff like some of it uh, might be some news to you. And that's where the idea of where you need to generate to generalize, where you think a little bit more if you're thinking of how supersymmetry is there. Okay, okay. And that's the that's the setup. I mean, that's basically the seed which um we let us form the so-called the generalized um, set, generalized, generalized um, symmetry to weak, weak. And see that one kind of, of, of after I classify those theory, like this one kind of theories become um, highly interesting and much, much less studied than say MSSM, MSSM which comes up uh, one, one uh, categories of the classification. Okay, so that's the best theme of things. So talking about the electroweak scale, why do you think that uh, the scale is somewhat I have to care about. Care about. So I'll, I'll start start from a different perspective. Let's forget about about the part of side. Okay. Let's take stick only grab absolutely nothing. Okay. So what do you know in a, in a gravity theory? To try to understand it from an effective perspective, um, characterized by a scale, the scale at which let's say it becomes strong, strongly covered. Um, and then then this is reactions. I, I mean the, the Lagrange. You just simply write it down in terms of those scales. And you have to have managed to do a measurement that is m star the scale you know less in the order in the order of one scale. That's basically what you know. Now the pro problem comes if I now couple particle particles to it. The moment I start coupling particle physics to it, uh, this scale m star that change that changes changes. Uh, uh, you can find out from simply because a loops involving the particles who we understand very well, you know, or on the black hole side, and what we realize that you can't really when you have when you have when you cover it through a gravity theory, theory you can't really take this theory with a the cutoff and the part of part of the reason why you cannot take the, the cutoff in t simply because the m star square is added a quantity which is proportional to lambda to lambda square and times some other factor and all this 
together together is what here in the lab, the lab which is ordered like square okay that same thing it's still that if you add a add a particle to the particle to the side you can't have the you can't have the can't have the cutout you see you know uh, uh, bigger than the uh, in black okay so that actually gives a wonderful set of wonderful idea idea is that how to think of low energy theory far far low energy in the far far in black and the weak of it well um you take any you tend to the positive power 30 so you take n number of in the particular physics side in order of n to the power 30 and you get the cutoff of your theory to the order of the order of 1 TV. This is close to the to the LP scale. Okay, I, and, and you know you can get this. So this is it. Yeah, Diwali around 2007. It's a wonderful idea. It's a beautiful idea, but that actually talks about the scale, scales, understanding, and the whole whole note that you can have have a standard model without any UV cutoff. I mean, that thing simply goes out of it. Okay. Now now comes comes question if you have your lambda you know and how do you make uh, uh, if you are if it has a lambda if it has a cut and then you, you some way you need to understand the low energy theory which let's say like the weak theory and, and as a, this is one example in which you can pull the lambda down order of one dv and and if it's up of t then then you have to do some, something more okay um, um the Listen from that, the way supersymmetry solves this is basically um, <coughs> the way uh, uh, supersymmetry solves is basically find a weak scale, which is a function of some, let, let's say, super partner scales. Okay. Um, and, and it, uh, um, and this super part, yeah, yeah. So a two weak scale is given in terms of, in terms of a function of super mark scales. And uh, what supersymmetry does, does is basically tell you. That you know, this um, all of all of these um, quantities, the super partner mass scales, these are extremely extremely well proved because Susie rot rotates chirally in the sector, and a result of that you have a complete creative control over the super partner. So, so therefore, the, the small quantity, the small mass quantity belong to belong to x square. This becomes radiatively stable. Okay. Now you could <coughs> ask the question that that how the smallness of, of the of the super partner masses because you have translated the question of you know what the electric parameter is electric weak scale is in terms of masses of the super partner so this is in super supersymmetric comes as a ratio of two months one is the scale in which super is broken and the scale at which the the, the, the information is broken broken of the system get to us right so for example if you take plunk plunk mediation uh, we we learned about the existence of the other sector was supersymmetry broken, you know, at the order of let's say Planck scale. In in those cases, you can the scale of Suzy breaking to the order of 10 to the power 10, 10 to the power 10 to the power 11 cube. Okay, so that, so the story is good, that we have a cut cutoff lambda, but we want to have a, a small to weak scale. Okay, so we may, we made this scale radiatively stable, and we are trying to gen, let's say generate this to weak scale. We found it to the uh, partner masses. Okay, the super partner masses we, we found related to this F, F by M. So you can explain F by M, then you're done. You need an, need an F, a height between F and an M, M uh, to get the, sm the small uh, M tilde square. Okay, um, so, so the way you think of how to get a hierarchy is there is nothing, is nothing better to do uh, how we have we managed to, to get, for example, proton masses. masses okay, still so lambda. The way, the way we get proton starting from lambda is because of this factor e to the power minus eight pi square by e square. Where this little thing, uh, small little number multiplied with the, multiplied with the lambda, which is let's say whatever your, whatever your cutoff was. This simply gives you, gives you the scale at length. That's your uh, one sheet. Okay. So the idea, idea, the way you get this square root of f by blank to be far far smaller than one, is is just to take from q theory. So what I'm using q theory. This small factor is basically generated because QCD runs run strong at low Q. Okay. And it generates a scale which becomes becomes strongly coupled. Okay. Uh, uh, in QCD, it's the masses of the program, for example, and as a consequence, scale scale symmetry. And in super the way we think of in a, in a hidden sector, there exists some hidden gauge group. The, the coupling coupling becomes strong at some intermediate, intermediate scale. Okay. Let's a square root or F. Uh, and and 
um, it becomes strongly coupled over and over there, the way you model such that the supersymmetry gets broken at this place. Okay. So <clears throat> we are over here where we talked about you know standing how the two is two scale works, the <coughs> context of supersymmetry. Uh, why this is a part of the problem. Move on to the part where um, we talk about a water complexity model scenario is. So you know it should be clear. It consists, consists of two different parts. One part is the, the messenger part, okay? And there are various different, different messages in golf, like the gravity, gauge, gauge anomaly, all these sorts of stuff. And then there is a part where part where dynamical is broken, okay? It's the information of these two particular sectors that comes at low, at low end. This is the one that we, we play with that we have discovered at low end, okay? So um, there are, of course, there are patterns and we have spent, spent you know, uh, hours thinking about, about this thing, uh, but, let, but let me just categorize or summarize uh, what we talked about in this particular context. So, um, um, so there are two kinds of two sectors. One is the so-called the uh, the, uh, the sectors, what they what the MSSM sector, the standard model fields and its super parts field. There's a hidden sector where system is broken, broken um, uh, dynamically. Okay, and then there is a message that the center communicates this in this information between it also gives you the, the scale. If you are thinking in terms of perturbative way, then you could you could tell you that then you could make, make a statement that you get rid of the messenger at the scale M, you find your effective your effective field theory uh, at the scale ALM that consists of the fields from, from the hidden sector, fields from the fields from your, your uh, MSS sector. Okay. Um, and these are the contact operators you get at the at the messenger messenger scale. Now you renorm renormalize both the theories. So so what you what you do not you change? You bas you basically change the coefficient, the Wilson's and coefficients of the, of this. Um, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. The Wilson coefficients of this of this active operator through the renormalization, and it's very clear the way I have way I have written down contact operator between with the visible set and the hidden sector. This contact operator runs because of the visible signal interactions as as the as the symmetry breaking interactions. Okay, okay. So at the end of the day, what do we have? At the end of the day, what what you find is the masses um, which you measure while you while you calculate your spectrum. These are just function of different pieces. So there so there is a message mechanism that that gives you this one over m squared piece. That's the mass of the messenger scale. Of fx, which has something to do with when supersymmetry is broken, that comes with that information come, come from the uh, how it's broken and what the what the hidden set dynamics. Okay, okay. and then, and then the Wilson coefficient in CI, which original the initial best came from your messenger mechanism. Okay, then it then it runs, it normalizes itself itself. And this is what evaluate at low end. Okay, so so. When you think of running running mass in the context of, of um, let MSSM, you are basically thinking of derived derived RG for these CIs, right? Now the the usual of when you think of think of this MI only, and you do not write in, in term contact operators, you simply forbid yourself, yourself from thinking about the supersymmetry breaking information. That's the reason why if you go back and look. Uh, uh, Transition group equa equation of, uh, for example, it looks like this mi square renormalizes only because of um, because of super, uh, because of like you coupling gauge coupling so on, which are uh, 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 visible interactions. Okay, okay, standard model interactions. So, right, not quite right. And then the the thing is that uh, your renormalization occurs because of both your both your hidden dynamics as as well as your standard model interactions. And in fact, the, the, the hidden sector, as I told you, you that you know by traction you need these dynamics to be strongly coupled. So the corrections from the uh, breaking dice often is much, much bigger than, than whatever you get the running above uh, uh, running above the, the intermediates level. So if you could think of renormalization, here is the story, right? This is the scale M where your message sector has decoupled, right? Below that scale, scale M, you have the 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 the, the Susie breaking field fields are dynamical objects, okay, and so that so the renormalization happens both because of the hidden DMS same interaction. <coughs> Excuse me. As you go below this below this intermediates, this is the scale at sort of the when your Susie is broken, 
annoyed, then X, X becomes a background. You might as well just treat this contact operator as the mass square operators because then you are because you're only sens sensitive to actions, uh, MS, MSS emissions. Okay, so so that's the setup. So whenever you think of uh, when you are thinking you, you are thinking of uh, writing an UV theory, um, how the how the masses or how the SUSY breaking operate, operators work on high scale, and, and you try to use your spectrum at low, low energy, basically what you have to do is that you have to think of going through the threshold, threshold the threshold where supersymmetry is broken. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the set. And with this setup, setup, then we are trying to try to build this, this theory. Okay. So in general, you are thinking of what, what exists in the hidden the SUSY breaking dynamics. Uh, you can can characterize characterize in terms terms of what sort of years these are. Okay. So the way we do we break, break up, up all vector things in, in terms of chi operators and vector operators. Not just that this would be um, singlets on under gauge emissions either there from the breaking sector or uh, or our visible sector vectors. Okay. Once you have them, you basically, you basically get a huge number of operators. Okay. You need to think through how you do normalize them as you go from from scale M to the intermediate scale. Okay. Now, now few things we have learned over the course of the years, especially from in the context of sequestering, is is that um, the chiral operator. You know, chiral operators are the ones, for example, which corresponds to let's let's say chiral uh, with, with, which gives the Susan effects down down, right? The chiral operators are actually actually all get suppressed. Okay, this has something to do with the fact that these are a, these are chiral, chiral, and number these are, are neutral under any other gauge field. So these are singlets. So since the single singlets operator at the at the end of the day, and uh, they always get subject. The normal measure is positive. Definitely. Okay, but but this is not a vector operator. In sense that you could build your more model, but it is fine. Always, but it, it's extremely hard to be positive and anomalous dimension to all vector operators. This is the lesson that we learned. We learned when dealing with the um, um, the string, and the thing we learned mostly is is that the the you know the the, the operator that almost always survive are the one that corresponds to some to some of some non-denormalizable some non-denormalizable normalizable current. As you go through go through the threshold. As you go from from you know very high scale M to the intermediate scale, these are the operators which remain main what were at very high scale. Okay, so what this tells you tells you your uh, your to him, uh, yeah. yeah when you mean vector operators um, they also contain uh, do they come from the Keller? They they would they would, uh, I will write down all the uh, operators right now. Uh, so if that is the case, then why do you say the renormalization is not there? Because scalar would have renormalization, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you think is that the, uh, think of it this way. Let me try to give you an example. Okay. So so um, let's say you have three fields, three fields, so one x two x three, right? So the operators that I'm th that I'm thinking of would fall to let's say x x one dagger x two dagger x two and x x three dagger x three. Okay. Now try plane giving in the inter in the interface, right? And what you will find is that some combina combinations is three operator operators, V1, V2, is almost, almost always not in operators. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, it's very, very difficult. Okay. Very, very difficult to, to make sure that the all, all, I mean, it is easy to make sure that, that um, a lot, lot of those operators are suppressed in the positive and opposite direction. It's very difficult to suppress all operators. Part of, part of the reason is that often you will find that that which you have you know you know made your let's say you know um, your interactions or so on you will always find there's some kind some kind of entry left left over okay and and um, some sort of global symmetry, symmetry left over and the corresponding currents you can construct using those vector operators and those particular particular combination of vector operators would not be denormalized okay. Okay. Yeah, the definite, definite, there were def non denormalization theorems associated with those uh, those currents which correspond to some conserved uh, UNS. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, in this case, from X1, X1, you find that X1, X1 dagger X1 minus X2 dagger, X2 dagger X1 denormalized, that corresponds to someone 
that you will see gives charges to plus one to x1 and minus one to uh, okay. and use that this this happens happens whatever terms you have written written down that symmetry was not proper okay 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 so so you, so what so that's when the gen generic statement is the sequence string is hard hard okay and 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 and, and the generic statement is that there is almost always there is it's not a theorem a theorem so we have theories where sequence string is correct meaning that all operators operators get suffixed otherwise anomaly mediation mediation would not work no but as i said not, those are not generic theories those are highly uh, meaning that you, you have to take a lot of your hair to get those kind of operators Get, but the generic, generically, in, in a strongly coupled couple theory, we are going to find that some some of the operators actually should not be renormalized, and which is a good thing because in the sense, the sense that you you what you find is that the the low end spectra is entirely determined determined to those operators. It doesn't get it. Okay, not the one which is suppressed, right? So you could forget about the rest of the rest of your. Uh, sorry, Tuhin, can you repeat your last sentence? I couldn't hear it. Okay. About okay. low energy uh, operators, what were you saying? So I start at the high scale, end, which uh, with contact operators with both chiral chiral some operators with chiral sorry chiral, sorry, chiral operators some vector operator, operators are okay. Now now um, as I go from M to lambda end, right? The even if the same order. The sizes, the ones which has positive anomalous anomalous dimension, they still uh, get sub suppressed with rest of ones which are, are non-anomalous. Right? As a result of which, uh, the operators which you are multiplying to time to this uh, uh, to this conservative, should I say this, this you know, which are not anomalized vector operator, these uh -huh. ones dominate the spectrum. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll give you so, so in a model building perspective, I, take, I can forget about M to lambda, to lambda. I can construct an effective filter with these operators. Okay. Okay. That's that's all I, all I mean because the other effects small suppressed, right? And 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 only thing that I need that I need to consider out those are which actually has a, a Susan a data. Okay, Susie breaking there. Okay. So so I'm not really thinking of fields, but rather thinking of operators. Which may which may eventually be fields at lambda end if their anomalous dimension is large enough, large enough. But doesn't matter. Okay. So let us write, write down what kind of operators you can write. And uh, this is some to start in order. This is what you found it is enough to um, to effectively write down all, down all the uh, effects of um, of such cases. So the Q's who's here and the W's who's over here are the uh, visible sector skews corresponds to all uh, chiral spurts, quarks, and so on. W corresponds to the, the, the W W one W three for the three the three fields, and the sigma sigma is the one that I have added, which are the uh, chiral chiral spurt in the adjoint representation. Okay, so those are all the operators I have. I have. So let me try. Not going going, going to spend a lot of time. Let me try to simply classify what the spectrum emerges out of. So first thing is this operator, A1. This is the this is the most important in this sense because if actually sorry before I do that, not all operators. If we be careful, all operators are not independent. For A2 can be eliminated okay, by redefinition of fields, and that would only would only give rise. For example, K4 4 will change K coefficients at the other others. But since it can be eliminated, we will go to go to a base where you know K2 is is gone. Then we basically have K2 to K4. And W1 to W5. Okay, okay. Let's so start with this and, and talk about the classification. So, so the, the K operator which I wrote, which is, which is simply a quantum between R Q and dagger Q. This is one of the most beautiful operator operator in the sense. This is non-zero non-zero or comparable to other uh, coefficients. Then what you get the, the scalar mass simply becomes significantly larger than any other mass the mass. The, so you you basically basic the split Susie emerges, emerges automatically without doing it anything. Right. The uh, the one way to think to think of where this is happening, this is sort of like anti-sequestering in the sense 
the in the in the holomorph is where the gigido, gigido masses do not but the, the scalar masses grows and so when when the we when the um the Susie breaking decouples you basically get the scalar masses much much heavier than, heavier than the gigido Okay, and then the spin the standard running take over, but it doesn't matter so much. That, that's what the thing is. It basically tells you you would only have uh, a genos, for example, at low energy, low energy, and the stick. Okay, so that's one kind, kind of theory that it predicts if K1, if K1 is, is comparable. Right? So if the theory is which K1 is further suppressed because of reconstruction or because of you know, certain mechanism that I don't know. Don't know so then things emerge differently. Uh, if from the omega one is one of the operator that we that we, we wrote over here, um, this operator and the scalar mass operate, operator give you equal equal contribution. Okay. So what you find here at, at energy, if you look here, this is the square uh, squat masses. For example, example this is lambda two t not not plus one d dimensionality of the operators okay, times square, where that m square, the gauge mass square would become exactly like that. So they are of the same order. So initial conditional condition for them are the, run, the running also gives it similar, similar contribution below the lambda in scale. scale. You know, so as I said, pure, pure Majorana physics soft skeletal masses comparable to gauge masses. And you know, this is the system that we love and we love and love. Okay. All, all the phenomenology is basically encoded. Okay, the interesting part, which we found some intriguing, was if you take, for example, omega omega one crest, the, the operator we took. In that case, it turns out that that gauges now start appearing, appearing in n equal to triplets. Okay, uh, you find the scalar scalar mass intermediate scale to be zero, or small basically, right? And and much compared to the gauges gauges masses, the um, the scalar masses does not does not get contribution, but get get the threshold correct from the gauge masses. So, so this this simply become uh, one over sixteen pi square suppressed. There is no there is no log anymore. Okay, so you get hierarchy between the square quarks and the, the gluino mass, mass. And this is the familiar, familiar story of soft. But there is more than that. this is not just super soft. This is what we we start calling just super soft. Okay. And it came out, came out because an extremely intriguing set of two operators that involve the Higgs boson. Okay, so if I if I please bear with me, okay, I'm just going to spell it out. It out. Uh, what are the, when I when I write down the operator which H H U when the derivative acts on H U, I find here. So this corresponds to Higgs to Higgs H U tilde. The Higgsinos have mass term. Uh, the Higgs Higgs down exists talks to the to the f of r okay not the way around okay so there is no f hd times which you get it from a standard u term right similarly the second operator gives it gives you the f d times h so when i put them, them all, to, all together I find that the gauge gauge no masses we have d m square h usually becomes mu mu square M square HD simply becomes mu D square. D square okay, and this is similar. So they are they are not like just the standard the standard mu term in your in your language. And not just you actually immediately see start getting weird things like this normal holomorphic trilinear trilinear planes. The A term, but unlike the A term, they are non holomorphic holomorphic. This is what this is what for example looks a lot about in his in his work. Okay, but this emerges just, just from this construction. Please, please bear with me for one minute for this while I try to explain what this was. So, so the potential that you get it, get it, get it. The so this is your Yukawa terms, the first terms of the Yukawa terms. Then I wish to, you know, um, write down whatever the Higgs potential is in terms of as if I have a mu term, proper mu term, mu term. So mu H which gives equal equal mass to the Higgs and the Higgs zeros. So I, in. Sorry, sorry. Can you? To him, you have uh, next few minutes to finish. Okay. Okay. Two minutes. Two minutes. Let's look. Let Thank me you. Thank you. There are some masses, masses for the adjoints and the other, the other operators. And not only that, that you have an initial condition is basically fixed. The gain of masses as, and these two patterns, mu u and mu t. Okay. Everything else is, de is determined in terms. Right. Right. 
have to do you have to solve, solve <coughs> the rgs the rgs are slightly non traditional uh, you you can go back to the paper and look at it. it's complicated but there's non traditional there is that there is additional terms in because of the non the non holomorphic pieces so this is roughly the spectrum and this is the slide that like that you want okay in 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 two minutes so what so they are basically hierarchical so first hierarchy you get you get in between the thumb support and this is mostly decoupled from from the other spectrum they don't they don't matter much so the log is small there is no log the um so the the works are four four pi rest there is order let's say pi pi suppressed respect to your duino sinus so if you have 2t b squared work that simply sit like 70 bb okay without loss of any general say. the left handed septum masses the doublets Okay, they again they get their complete completely they get this from the um, uh, from the side and again that, that's the order by suppress. So if you make them order order by GV, you you get it around the TV or something the way you start. Okay, and the beautiful part of it is that um, you there is a, is a there is an option for you to take the, the Bino right handed slept under mass. Which entire mass comes from the so called the S term, which comes because comes because if your view are different, and you have that option of because they come entirely from entirely from S mass, you can make make them quite regenerate with the Bino itself, and that ends up giving your thermal thermal without giving any problem. Okay, so this is roughly roughly how the spectrum after you calculate the whole thing. And the last slide, right? So this is a summary of the phenomenon in this sense that your, your electrometry baking, for example, if you try to make everything work out, but they are non-trivial, but they will work out. Okay. They work out. You do get uh, thermal LHC bounds. By construction, your LHC bounds are, bounds are because electrons are very, very close, order 5% degeneracy with the with the, uh, with the, with the, with the right? You do manage to get light Higgs mass. I, Really, really check how big of a changing effects so are changing minus two effects that you can calculate. And, and what order you was thinking about that tuning, the tuning, the tuning term will be very small. As you see it very clearly, clearly because the option of we are doing, doing the largest cutting of Higgs m square h of h down basically comes from the Wino, and they are of the of the order of you know 500 GV square. So it corresponds to the to the cancellation of 25 and so on and so on. So that basically is the story, um, and uh, only point I would like to say to say over that um, the, the the super generalized super sub what we said said here you know, the word in the sense is, is generalized. It's not we have included it's extra, but it's generalized in the sense that comes out very 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 it emerges nicely from the soft soft uh, making strong. Uh, there is some more work but probably one can do and should be should be done. Okay, uh, that's, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tohin. Questions for Dr. Tohin Roy? Okay, Rohini, please go ahead. So, Tohin, uh, thank you for reminding us of these things. Uh, I had a you know sort of uh, sort of comment on your uh, last uh, slide where you said phenomenological yeah yeah this one here so you know in some sense uh, one question i had was um, the, for example when we now see g minus 2 i mean the models for g minus 2 that uh, people are you know suzy explanations uh, that are going with uh, people like endo and you know the japanese group they are actually looking at spectra like this, right? So, I mean, it, uh, in some sense, uh, having a, there, there is a, there are small regions of parameter space, but where you can avoid the LHC bounds, you still, you have a light slept on and uh, you have a lightish uh, charge nodes. Yeah. And that seems to be still uh, there in the market. So uh, what is your comment on this? So you, are you asking me, me why I'm not telling it? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that uh, that to me, that seems like, uh, you know, since you said don't know what is G minus two, all I'm saying is that in fact, 
right now with the new G minus two uh, activity, people have actually looked at scenarios oh, which oh. Uh, explain relic as well as G minus two and which have spectra very similar to what you are uh, yeah. saying here on this slide. So I just wanted your thoughts about it. Yeah, so the, you are very, you are very right here about this. But the thing is, is there's a little, you know, as you know, like, you know, like the moment you tell yourself to, to um, say you liberate yourself that you don't want to think in any any other spectra, you will take it only, the, for example, the right-handed slaptons, low energy and things like that. Um, there you get a, a quite a good understanding that what your what your genius or something. But on the other hand, if you have the full spectra in your mind, um, you have to be little, to be little more clear in terms of there, there are other parameters which also, also need, to, need to be uh, taken into account. account. So that solution is going to be a lot, lot more involved. So that's it. Like the like, like when you when you example the non-holomorphic more pictures, right? Like the Higgs holomorphic term, because they also are also are contributing, also contributing to, uh, to the to, to the G minus two collection. So it, it it has to be done. I think it has to be. I to be, I haven't done that. That's what I when I say don't know. That means I haven't. I haven't done that. the context of of the full. Okay, but I think is that since there seems to be this uh, sort of uh, nice uh, picture that see, see people seem to find. Though it is very narrow area of the parameter space yeah. where this uh, happens, still it seems, I mean, obviously it depends on uh, in the context uh, language in which these people do the analysis. They take only the uh, electroweak scale values of the M1, M2, M3, et cetera, make certain assumptions about uh, other parameters, but still it should be interesting, I feel, because of the right nature of the spectrum that is required to handle this, it seems to me, you know, maybe some attention can be given to this and one can sort of understand since it's so, uh, to me, uh, this is a very theoretically well-motivated idea. It might be interesting to see what, uh, what stays of the idea. So uh, what one more thing I would say? I mean, I completely agree with you what you just said. I, I'll add one. Add one more thing is not. not I mean, if you think of the other, other bound, for example, how do you inter interpret from the plus mid bound? Right. I mean, interpreting, for example, the stand the stand uh, the bounds of, of uh, upper bound on the cross cross set in terms of what it mean, means in in terms of parameters in your. In, Parameters is in your theory. It's mostly done in the context of let's say MSS. Okay. The one of the crucial difference between between in this is the existence one hierarchy. A second thing is the existence of this approximate R symmetry. Is that that the cross sections and other things becomes much smaller for the jet production, jets plus mid production, production things like that, right? Diet jet productions. For example, so that interpretation, I, I think there is a, a lot interpreting the bounds of the uh, from the LC also in also in the in the quantity that's still lagging lagging with respect like the other uh, other other low end so that that a recasting and understanding is the it's sort not of a worthwhile exercise is uh, what I want to say before one says that Suzy ideas are to be thrown out or draw, draw conclusions. This is a very important uh, exercise. And I just wanted to point out that there are many features of, that people require from phenomenological analysis, which seem to be reflected in this generic uh, predictions. Uh, thank you, Rohini. Let's take the last question by Sudhir Vempati. To him, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, see, um, uh, in the limit of exact sequestering, uh, these operators vanish, right? Limit of exact, exact sequestering, all operators vanish. Vanish, but these uh, anomaly mediation contributions are always there. Yes, they're all there. So when you say some coefficients are suppressed, yes. Uh, how suppressed are they? Meaning, will they be comparable to anomaly mediation or? Uh, 
No, no. See that factor is the 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 fact is the way you start out with is plant mediation, so, right? Right. So you find your anomaly mediation is already like let's say, say uh, your f x is the fundamental fundamental breaking of supersymmetry, right? And f over r implies right. Right. And and a six square or something. So so it's always putting on. If I think of like the whole thing is is what's giving what's giving me the anomaly mediated predictor. Absorb it into the one over six over sixteen square. Piece. Then you see this is always so small step to just pure f x x over f. If I think in terms of just field fields, right? Okay. So to have this effect, uh, uh, you know, visible, you need this to be to be some more. At least okay. this is so... ten to what? So so that's what the conformal sequestering was. Right. Right. The conformal sequestering you just have to put everything down there. Right. And then only and only an mediation would. Would, would be dominant, right? Right. That's right. Like, like right. That. But the story about about this that that in general generic, what I think is more generic is that some of it is indeed goes deep goes but some of it may not. Okay. That that's, was, a, uh, that's a basic that's idea. That not normalized. Okay. And so the you 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 really normal mediation would would exist head above the existing thing. No, uh, the the reason I am asking this question is uh, because you had K I uh, in the first case uh, much suppressed, right? Uh, uh, so, the split Suzy case. Yeah, the split Suzy case. No, 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 these K I will suppress, no, because these K I are operators involving the R R. The R is not in all. Ah, okay. Uh, all right, fine. Okay. So, so I am I am writing. I am not really really writing the key, writing the the. Where did it go? I'm not really writing it in a minus star, but you realize realize that every else which are renormalized, which are all are all suppressed down. Only thing that I'm left left with the step of lambda in it are basically ones which are non-renormalized. Right. Okay. Okay. And okay. these these ones to the R's which are. Okay. Thank you. Last question. Sorry. Last question to him. Lekhika Malhotra has a very simple question. Can you explain for her what is a split Suzy? I believe she is a student who is asking you this question. So split Suzy has has many many way of it. What it basically do? The uh, Nian Dimopoulos at some point said that uh, look, let us completely give out the idea of of what natural is because we have the um, in any case the hierarchy problem problem associated naturalist problem associated with cosmology constant and so don't try to solve it but what but what really like suzy is unification okay all all these problem of the neutral current currents and the that all of those plus problems and i want is because you also want your scalars to appear at the same, at the same as these so so what they want to they want to have gauge coupling unification to work out work out They will remove the scalars, and the result, which was split split suits, they thought that we would take take scalars at very very high, ten to the power ten, ten to the power eleven, ten to the power eight, ten to the power eight, ten to the power nine. Keep only only the Higgsino uh, and, and the uh, the Gagino at at low energy. Okay, Higgs Higgs Higgsino Gagino low energy, and keep everybody at very high. All the scalars stay there, and that essentially was what's what split suits. Okay. Okay, so oh, thank you to him. Thank you for a good talk and uh, good discussion. Thank you to him Thanks. again.